artificial intelligence change the face of art? Is AI friend or foe? We're all gonna die, and it's because of AI. And is AI making cheating irresistible? Students at least know that they're not supposed to use the tool. So how do you feel about artificial intelligence? What artificial intelligence? <laughs> yeah, really neither did we. Hi, I'm Katie McKenna, and this is The Signal. In today's show, we're talking all about artificial intelligence. So what is artificial intelligence? This definition comes from the Government of Canada. AI is a type of computer science that creates programs that do things we would think were intelligent if a human did them. It's all around us, from self-driving cars to smartphones. It's hard to mention AI these days without talking about ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI language model. Some say it's making it easier to cheat in schools. Angela Capobianco brings us the story. University is stressful, which can lead some students to cheat. It's not a new thing. The University of King's College Library has a record of the first mention of irregularities in violations of rules. Cheating. That was in 1855. Fast forward to the latest technology to offer easy grades, ChatGPT, an AI language model program that scours the internet for information and compiles it into essays or articles, making it almost undetectable. And that has educators concerned about cheating. Computer science professor Frank Rudzik says anti-cheating policies have to be updated, all to close the latest loophole, computers writing assignments. So it could be something as simple as like on the, you know, when we submit assignments um, in, or when we give students assignments in university, there's usually all this text about, you know, the work has to be your own and um, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't you know, discuss work with other students and that sort of thing. So it's a simple matter of having that boilerplate text approved by the university in such a way that it covers a lot of these um, artificial agents. Um, you know, so students at least know that they're not supposed to use the tool. Any cases of cheating ends up here on Bob Mann's desk. He's seen as many as 746 students cheating. As the manager of Discipline and Appeals, he says ChatGPT should be shaking up the way teachers evaluate students. I personally think that those academic integrity approaches and policies are really only one little piece. They're one little slice. To me, the bigger frontier of this is to look at the pedagogical approaches, the value of the things being taught, uh, the structure of the evaluation, things like that. Ann says ChatGPT is offering an opportunity to change how students are evaluated, or evaluations will go back to more formal, sit-down, handwritten exams, just like they did in 1855. This is Angela Capobianco, The Signal, Halifax. So how does artificial intelligence affect your life? Um, <laughs> I guess it probably does things for various different people, or potentially can do things for people in the future, I guess. But I'm not sure how it affects my life now. I think artificial intelligence has a lot of potential for uh, improving the standard of living of folks, uh, but oftentimes it is used for uh, purely profit-driven uh, incentives, um, making money off of marketing, whatnot, uh, targeted advertising. I'm a digital marketer, so a lot. Like, I feel like a lot of things are automated through artific artificial intelligence. Um, I would say I, don't, I know it affects my life in a lot of ways, but I just don't think about it day to day. Though we don't encourage cheating, a warning for those looking in to chat GPT. The program is about two years out of date, so don't write an essay on the Queen. Declan joins me now. So Declan, I hear chat GPT isn't the only program raising concerns. Yes, AI generated art like Lenza and Dali have become popular in recent months. And is Lenza changing the face of art dramatically? Well, I talk about that in my story. Take your face and make it into art. This took me 10 minutes to create. There are many applications like this that now allow anyone to create art and pretty impressive art in minutes. 
How disruptive will this be to artists and those who teach art? Art professor David Clark thinks all of the latest AI art programs just give artists a new challenge. And so in some ways, I think the artist's job is not is is not just to kind of do what the machine wants us to do or to kind of create recognizable things, but our job is really to kind of create the new things, uh, to play around with the technologies and figure out what it's what's possible in them, not necessarily what necessarily they just do. Um, so I think this is a kind of an upping of that game. David Clark says photography didn't end painting. It just gave us a new tool for us to use. In fact, you know, it just opens up, uh, just as photography did when it came along and disrupted painting, um, it made painting do different things. Like we had a whole different kind of understanding of what the aesthetics of painting were uh, after photography took over the task of reproducing reality. Now we have to figure out, well, what does art do when we can do all this in an automated way? I mean, part of it is astounding. I mean, that that you have this system that can, you know, produce produce a, a, a portrait of, um, you know, three sheep in the style of Picasso, blue period, and that it might produce something like that. Like, that's, that's a, it's astounding. Computer science and history professor Aaron Wright says the new AI raises old questions about what is art and who's the real artist. There's a lot. There's been lots of debate over time about whether a certain technological intervention counts as art, and who then counts as the artist. And um, one of the through lines of this for AI is that people like to ascribe the art making to the system, the code or the computer or the something, as opposed to the programmers or the corporation or the individual who typed in the description. What do the artists say? Um. I am not sure if it would like, I think that it's likely to affect um, the art market and like uh, what, uh, how much, like how many jobs practicing artists can get. AI art can easily be used as a tool if you want to kind of expand the boundaries of the program or what it's kind of like designed to do. Declan Z. Roll, The Signal, Halifax. Joining me now is Anna Mandan to talk about her story. Hey Katie, are you afraid of AI? Not yet, not until it becomes sentient. Well, AI isn't sentient yet, but there are real risks today. I do not want it to change. Will artificial intelligence be our ruin? The Terminator. Probably not, says Dalhousie University computer science professor Thomas Trappenberg. But he warns that AI is only a tool and can't reason like a person. Um, and again, as a society, we have to educate ourselves that we are always uh, aware that we need to question ourselves at each step. Uh, is, are, there, are there things we miss? Um, should we just blindly follow? He also warns that people have to be more aware of how AI can be used to trick you. For example, phishing emails that try to steal your money or get your private information. As the software learns over time, it gets harder to discern between scams and genuine emails. I mean, crooks will somehow find a way to misuse it in one way or another. So it's rather important for us to, to stay on top of things. How much do you trust artificial intelligence? Uh, I don't trust it at all. It's very scary. I feel like it's going to rule over the world one day. Uh, I don't know very much about it. I know that it's useful in some circumstances, but I'm afraid of it. We're all going to die, and it's because of AI. And they should have that on a t-shirt. Is there anything else you want to add? Don't trust the government. The Government of Canada is starting to use artificial intelligence. The Government of Canada posts basic information to warnings about artificial intelligence. Its Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity has issued a threat assessment for the next year. Everything from how malicious software tricks security systems into trusting it, to using AI to find out sensitive personal information. Uh, it's not the technology per se which is the problem. It is how we... Um, how we manage as a society to integrate this technology. 
That's something the Canadian Centre for Cybersecurity agrees with. It said that Canadians should remain vigilant where artificial intelligence is concerned. Reporting for The Signal, I'm Anna Mandon. The House of Commons is also in its second reading of a bill about artificial intelligence, Bill C-27. Ipsos Reid released a poll recently on artificial intelligence. Their data revealed that 64% of people don't understand how AI affects their lives. And 49% are nervous about AI in their life. Now for artificial intelligence and whales. I had a discussion with a Dalhousie University professor about how scientists are using AI to save the endangered North Atlantic right whale. The Department of Computer Science worked together with the Department of Oceanography. This collaboration worked with AI technology to get a window into the movements of the North Atlantic right whale. The North Atlantic right whale has become a household name in recent years as an increasing number fall victim to the shipping traffic in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. We do uh, work with two types of data in principle. One is uh, data about ship movements, a kind of a GPS for ships that you can uh, track ships with. And uh, the other is um, uh, acoustic data from the ocean that allows you to kind of sense the ocean and find out what's there and uh, what's not there and uh, what's going on. Then they extract the whale calls, their locations, and the time they passed specific buoys. Combining the track of the whales with the movement of ships, they hope to see where the two intersect. The artificial intelligence used is algorithm-based. Hey Siri, what's the weather outside today? Looks like it will be cloudy today. Daytime Algorithms like the ones we use daily. This technology couldn't come soon enough. There are less than 400 of these whales left in the world today. Well, that concludes our look at AI. But what are you doing this weekend? It's the Lunar New Year. That means fortune and dumplings for those who celebrate. Emma Noggle and Rye Pembroke worked on this story. This Sunday marks Lunar New Year, a time to celebrate togetherness and community. Thank you so much for coming. Happy New Year. Yeah. Uh, Dalhousie's Engineering Student Center teamed up with the Chinese Society of Nova Scotia to offer a dumpling making workshop for Dal students. Yeah, so in Chinese culture we follow the lunar calendar. Um, so at the start of the new moon we'll celebrate and it lasts 15 days. So we wear red, we make loud noises, um, and we decorate our homes in red as well. Mid-semester, a lot of Chinese students are away from home. This is a chance to gather and celebrate. This is a traditional Chinese festival, so uh, I just want to come to here and to attend this event and to uh, come together with my friends to celebrate this Chinese New Year. Over 50 students attended, each taking home six to eight dumplings for good luck in the new year. As for what the year of the rabbit means, is it signifies uh, prosperity, um, peace, and longevity. So. For The Signal Halifax, I'm Rye Pembroke. If you want to celebrate the Lunar New Year, there will be a buffet for all students at the Dalhousie Agricultural Campus. The Dalhousie Chinese Society is also having a lantern ceremony. So, from all of us at The Signal, Happy New, Happy New Year! Year! I'm Katie McKenna for The Signal. See you next week.